Hey everyone, it's Anthony here. In today's video, what I'll be talking about is Flask Nav. I'll be introducing you to this extension, which allows you to create nav bars in Flask. So before I get to that, I just want to show you the Flask cheat sheet. You can go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet to get this. It's just a helpful PDF file with different things that you would do in Flask, different common things that you would do. So go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet for that. So the first thing that I'll do to work with Flask Nav is actually I'll install it. So pip install flask dash nav. I already have it installed so I didn't have to install again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import nav from Flask Nav. I'll instantiate both Flask app and the nav bar. So nav and pass an app. And then what I'll do is I will create an index route and this is where I'm going to show what the nav bar looks like. So I'm going to need to import render template and then render template here. I don't have anything in my index template yet, but I'll get to that eventually. And then what I'm going to do here is just put the app in debug mode when I run it. Okay, so I have the basic parts of the app. Now what I need to do is show you how to actually use Flask Nav. So if you're not familiar with Flask Nav, it basically allows you to create your nav bar in Python, and then that nav bar will automatically be injected into your templates for you to use. And the advantage of this is because it's in Python, you can group it better, you can put it in one specific place, and it's, it's easier to understand the change, so it's not really coupled with your template. So it will generate HTML when it's rendered, but it starts off as Python code. And to demonstrate what that looks like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to register an element. So I'm going to call nav.register elements. And then I'll give this nav bar a name. So the first thing that goes here is a name and I will call this my nav bar. You can put it as whatever you want, but I put my nav bar. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to input or import some elements from Flask Nav. So from Flask Nav dot elements, I'm going to import some things. And for our purposes, I'll be using navbar. This might actually cover all of them, but navbar, subgroup, view, link, text, and separator. Okay, so I'll be using those six. And just to briefly explain what these are, navbar is the main navbar. Subgroup is kind of like a sub nav section within a nav bar. A view is a link to a route that you have in your app. Link is a link to some other destination that is not in your app. Well, it could be in your app, but it doesn't have to be. Text is just plain text and separator is a separator. So to build this nav bar, what I'll do in my register element after I've set the name, I'm going to add a nav bar element. And then for this nav bar element, I need to give it a name as well. The name doesn't really matter in this case because you don't do anything with it, but I'll give it a name anyway. Nav, or let's call this um, the nav. Okay, so like I said, you're not going to reference that name anywhere, but the code requires a name. So after the nav, I can start adding in my other elements. So I can add in views, I can add in subgroups, links, text or separators. So I'll start by adding one view and that view is going to be the index. So the first argument here is going to be the name that appears when someone sees the link. So let's say homepage. And then the second argument is going to be the actual route that this is supposed to link to. So I only have one route in my case so far, so I'm just going to put index. So you just pass it as a string. And remember, this is the name of the view function, not the route or the endpoint that you have in the route. So if I do this, then that should be enough for my nav bar. So I think I just need one more closing parentheses here. Or no, maybe that's good enough. And I will start up the app and show you what this looks like. Okay, so it says register element takes three positional arguments, but four were given. That's because I closed out my nav bar too early. So this should not have a parenthesis there. There should be a parenthesis there. Okay, so it was just out of place. 
So navbar is the second argument to register element. And you can create this navbar outside of register element, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm creating it inside. If you want to create it outside, you say my nav, nav, nav bar, if I can spell nav bar, and then blah, blah, blah. But in this case, I'm just putting it all in register element. So I'll save that and let's try running the app again. Okay. If I go to my index here, I don't see anything. And the reason why I don't see anything is because I haven't rendered the nav bar yet. So what I'll do in my template is first I'll put some basic HTML and then what I'll add is nav. So nav is going to be global to your template and then the name of your nav bar. In this case, it's my underscore nav bar. So my underscore nav bar. And then you call the render function on it. So when I call that, I should see something different. And I don't because it is not picking up the new template. So I'll restart my app and let's see. Okay, so now it picked up the changes and I see there is a link to the home page. And if I view source for this and zoom in, we see it adds a nav. There's a class nav bar and then an unordered list, a list item and it has active and then the link and then the text that I have. So you should be able to quickly figure out how things work from here. So what I'll do is I'll add a second view. And what I'll do for this view is I'll make it to where you can pass in a value. So say app routes item, and then it's going to take in a variable called item as well. Let's just say items to make them separate. And I'll call this view function item and it's going to take in an item. I'm not actually going to do anything with this. It's just for demonstration purposes, the item page. The item is, and then I'll just add a blank there and I'll format with the item. So what I'm doing here is what I'm planning to do at least is I'm going to, if I can find the right place to add a comma, I'm going to add a second view, but this time it is going to be for some item. And let's say, item one. So the first argument is the title, what you see on the screen. And then the second is the view function, in this case, item. And in this case, you can pass in more arguments to represent the variables here. So if I pass item and then give it some kind of number, let's say one, then it's going to pass item one and we'll see that URL get constructed. So save that and now let me refresh I see item one here you probably can't see the the link at the bottom but if I view source you see it has items slash one so if you want to add variables for whatever reason you can do that there so you can call the same view function multiple times as long as you're passing in different arguments for that okay so that is a view let me show you the other elements so we have a link. A link is very straightforward. The first argument is going to be the name. So let's say Google. And the second is going to be a location, Google. So if I refresh this, I can actually click on this link and something interesting will happen. It sends me to Google. If I go back and click on item one, I forgot to show you the item page and the item is one. So we see that the view for item one is working correctly. And if I view source again, Note that the active one is the index, and that's because Flask Nav knows we're on the index, and the other ones aren't listed as active. They don't have this active class. So now what I'll do is I'll add a separator, and the separator, it just takes the separator and then the parentheses. If I add that, you see there's a divider here. Sometimes that'd be useful, sometimes it wouldn't be. It just depends on how you are styling your nav bar. And then finally, I'll add text. So you can think of text as being the most basic version. Here is some text. Doesn't take any other arguments because it's just text. And I see here is some text here. Then finally, what I'll do is I'll show you a sub menu. So you call subgroup and then it's pretty much the same as nav bar. So you give it a name. We'll say um, extras. 
And then you can start passing in links, views, texts, or separators. So link, Yahoo, yahoo.com. I'll add view, index, and then the index here. And now if you're using blueprints, then you'll have to add blueprints name and then whatever your indexes after a period. So the name of your blueprint period index, but I don't have any blueprints, so I'm just calling index. So view, and then I'm pretty sure you can figure out that the rest work the same. So let me just show you what this looks like. You see that it is a sub menu here. So this is really ugly and that's to be expected because this doesn't have any styles to it, but unordered lists and list items are fairly easy to style. So as long as you reference the class navbar, maybe I can do a simple style. I'm not a designer, but I can throw something in there. So navbar, um, color, red. And then close out the style, just to show you that it will look different if I add a certain style to it. And if I refresh this, maybe my style didn't get accepted. I just think I need to restart my app. It is not picking up on my changes in the template folder. Okay, so we can see here that the style that I just added has been picked up. So now everything is red instead of being the default colors because I added that style. So that's very ugly, of course, and you probably wouldn't want to do that. But just know that the idea is Flask Nav generates the HTML for the menu for you, and then it's up to you to actually style it. So that's it for this video, just a short introduction to Flask Nav. If you have any questions about Flask Nav, you can leave a comment down below. Remember, if you want to download the Flask Cheat Sheet, go to prettyprinter.com slash Flask Cheat Sheet. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And thank you for watching this video. I will talk to you next time.